I'm sure that we've all had that experience at least once where a cartoon we adored watching was cut down in its prime, leaving us crying for more. But then, on the other end of the scale, we have those everlasting gobstoppers of animation that just do not, cannot, and will not quit. So, for this list, let's take a look at some of Cartoondom's most legendary long runners, among those produced for television, that is. If we count theatrical shorts, this is gonna get really muddled really fast. When the lowest ranked 2010's Cartoon Network show on this list can boast a whole 252 episodes over six seasons, you know their properties did numbers that decade. It's not so strange in the case of The Amazing World of Gumball, though, with its striking visuals that present most characters in unique art styles and mediums, this family of blue cats, pink rabbits, and one goldfish made their mark on the channel and left us with many hours of hilarity to watch and rewatch. The Smurfs certainly have made themselves known on an international scale, while based on a series of Belgian comic books that are quite popular across Europe, the US mostly know these guys for their cartoon exploits, which managed to last for an impressive 256 episodes and led to the creation of several feature films, for better or for worse. Ugh. Realistically rendered Brainy Smurf is not real, he can't hurt me. How the heck did a show that always starts with 30 solid seconds of four dudes drinking beer in front of a fence last for nearly 260 episodes? Well, it probably doesn't hurt that the show's creator, Mike Judge, had already made himself well known for creating the iconic dumb duo, Beavis and Butthead, another long-running show that, counting its 2011 revival, racked up over 220 episodes. And yet, despite being that show's antithesis in many ways, King of the Hill outlasted its predecessor over the course of a whole 13 seasons, carving itself a place in the pantheon of the longest animated sitcoms ever. For every brilliant British sitcom that lasts only a handful of episodes, the UK seems to give us one children's series that lasts longer than all the canned food you keep in the fallout shelter under your house. Wait, you guys, you guys don't have one of those? Anyway, Horrid Henry, based on a series of children's books by Francesca Simone, has so far lasted 260 episodes, all about a particularly bratty boy named Henry. Think of him as, um, let's just say, a much meaner British version of Dennis the Menace. Oh wait, no, they already, they already have one of those. Odd as it looks at first glance, regular show somehow managed to become one of the biggest of Cartoon Network's shows. Over the course of eight seasons and even a movie special, the otherwise mundane exploits of this pair of perpetually lazy park workers took very sudden, sharp turns into off-the-wall, 80s culture-inspired surrealism more than 260 times, giving its audience a truckload of bizarre adventures to enjoy. How long has this guy been living in that pineapple under the sea by now? Long enough to get himself nearly 270 episodes and three theatrical feature films. So, let's just say quite a while. The over-the-top, happy, wacky charms of this Bikini Bottom resident and his friends and enemies has proven to have a long, enduring charm. And it's unlikely that Nickelodeon is in any hurry to put a stop to the spongy shenanigans anytime soon especially with two spin-offs on the way, even though one in particular looks, um... Oh boy. Few people predicted that what started out as a supremely silly and simple-looking show would end up becoming one of Cartoon Network's biggest and most influential franchises. But as its main protagonists and its audience grew, so did the show, tackling more complicated stories and themes, always expanding its lore and experimenting with animation styles, all without losing any of its initial whimsy. With over 280 episodes and four HBO Max specials, the fun truly seems to never end. Good morning, USA, is what Stan Smith has so far said a little over 300 times in this truly all-American sitcom created by Seth MacFarlane, whose other wildly successful show we'll, we'll get to soon enough. With its constant lampooning of over-the-top patriotism and various political attitudes, American Dad managed to distinguish itself from its predecessor fairly well, and while Fox did cancel it, it has been picked back up by TBS, so fans can rest assured that they'll get to watch Stan Smith leap out of bed to go to work a few more times still. 
To say that South Park had humble beginnings would be putting it mildly. What started out as two primitive shorts took off like wildfire once it was granted a show on Comedy Central. Within just a few seasons, it not only got itself a movie and a slew of video games, but now, 300 plus episodes later, it has firmly established itself as the poster child for deliberately vulgar TV satire. For a show that constantly faces such negative reactions from fans of the show that came before, the superhero comedy series Teen Titans Go certainly has managed to rack up quite the episode count so far, with 312 episodes and even a theatrical movie that many of the show's detractors had to admit was actually pretty funny. It's also not going anywhere anytime soon, as its seventh season is currently still airing. With 17 years of history, the British children's program Peppa Pig has managed to climb its way up to more than 320 episodes. And how could it not with riveting events such as uh, jumping in muddy puddles or... Um, hmm. Look, it's a show for preschoolers. It's got to keep things simple, all right? This French cartoon all about a blue cat, yep, another one, and his constant struggles against three troublemaking cockroaches in his house has entertained people for nearly 350 episodes and one movie, and technically even more, as in recent years, it has started reanimating all episodes from the early seasons, bringing it up to a staggering 501. But I'm gonna be a stickler, not count those, because I'm no fun at parties. It seems today that all you see is a whole lot of Family Guy. Since its premiere in the late 90s, this animated sitcom has racked up over 360 episodes, which I would say isn't too bad for a show that otherwise managed to get canceled not once, but twice back in its early years. While it tends to catch a lot of flack for its crude sense of humor and what some would say is an over-reliance on nonsensical cutaway gags, it must be doing something right to endure for as long as it has. All right, show of hands, how many of you have heard of Crusader Rabbit? This show, all about a brave rabbit knight, may have only had four minutes per episode, but it nonetheless had nearly 450 of them to make up for it. Being the very first cartoon produced specifically for television, it may look overly simple now, but no matter how you slice it, none of the cartoons on this list or any other TV cartoon you have ever enjoyed would have existed if not for the trail that Crusader Rabbit blazed for them. How many people watching the Tracy Ullman show back in the late 1980s looked at these shorts about a yellow-skinned, dopey-looking family and went, this is gonna be the biggest phenomenon in TV animation history. My guess is pff, not many, but still, the misadventures of The Simpsons led to a 30-plus seasons-long legacy and made them enduring icons of worldwide pop culture that simply refuse to die, even if there are many viewers out there who think it should have done exactly that a little over 20 seasons ago. But it just keeps on kicking. This isn't even counting things like cartoon shorts, various Eastern shows, and claymation puppet show long runners, some of which probably dwarf these in episode count. And I'm sure there is a discussion to be had about quality over quantity here too, but personally, I like to think that some of these manage to strike a pretty fine balance in both. 